What's going on guys? Welcome back down to the basement. Nathan's here. Beard is no longer here. Uh, Bert is here. Toolbox is here. Cocker stuff is here. And uh, my apologies for the delay. So, as you can tell, uh, it, it had been, I don't know, six or seven years since I'd seen my own face. So I decided to uh, remind myself what the hell it looked like. Uh, turns out it still looks the same and now I'm cold. So uh, there's that. So I figured we would go ahead, considering it's been forever anyway, and let's finish making this damn new frame. Uh, I apologize, things have gone crazy again as far as work life and other stuff going on. So as always, there's a hundred million things going on, and I have not gotten near enough done as far as what I should be done. So let's go ahead and get into it. So, today, uh, we've already talked about gutting the frame, we've already talked about making the backing plate, and now we're going to talk about uh, the things that you need to do as far as modifications to the air ram and the frame itself. Uh, we'll try to cover the frame, we'll see how far we get. So, uh, the first thing we're going to cover is actually going to be the valve. Uh, so this is your the label Fabco Air MSV2. Uh, now I recently found out that Fabco is only a, uh, a distributor in the U.S. Uh, apparently, so you can't buy directly from them. From what I hear over overseas, but if you Google it real quick, apparently there is a uh, a list of international distributors. So. If, if you're overseas and you're watching this, you, you might still be able to find someone who, distrib who distributes Fabco products uh, in your country or in your, your general area, if nothing else. And it probably is going to be a hell of a lot less hassle than trying to get somebody to ship it from the United States. That being said, if you can't, I'm sure we could probably figure something out. I mean, these are a lot of fun. So, uh, so anyway, here's your Fabco MSV2 valve. As you can see, we have a couple of barbs down in the bottom. Uh, if I remember correctly, these are 1032 thread, so pretty standard stuff. You should have some of these laying around in your cocker spares. There's a cat. What the hell do you want? That's what I thought. Um, so, we have that. Those are pretty standard. They should already be threaded. Uh, one thing that we are going to go over while we're here, and we will uh, show you why when we get to the last steps of mounting this all up. So, I've seen a couple different ways of people mounting uh, these valves. The way that I have done the few of these frames that I have done is these holes that are already in the valve for mounting are just pretty damn close to the tolerance that you need for an 832 thread uh, screw. So they will thread 832. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. I forgot to grab the cap. Uh... So, like I said, I've seen people drop smaller bolts into them and uh, run with those, and it will work. Uh, I prefer to mount them with an 832 because then you know for a fact that it's going to be uh, pretty well straight on and good and tight. You're not going to have any wiggle room. Um, now, when you're... Yes, of course, this is not the best way in the world doing this. Tapping something, just holding it in your hand... It's obviously not the most wonderful way to do it, but in this case, we're tapping, hell, less than a half an inch, and it's in brass. Uh, this stuff is really, really super soft. Uh, so, move your bourbon, and you can see, I mean, with very minimal torque here, we're just running right into it. Now, if you've never done any tapping before, when you're doing this, it's not as much of a big deal with brass because it is a very soft metal and the chips clear fairly easily. Um, but normally what you're going to want to do, run in a couple turns, back out a couple turns. The harder the material you're tapping, the more frequent you want to back up. Basically what you're doing is just clearing the chips out of the path of the tap. So that way you're not binding anything up, you're not galling any of the threads that you're creating. Now you can use a little bit of uh, oil or tapping lube, anything like that when you're doing this. It's not really necessary and from what little metallurgy experience I have, what little metalwork experience I have, 
Uh, I have found that brass not only doesn't care, but doesn't seem to particularly like using any sort of, uh, of cutting lubricants. Um, so as you can see, well, we'll see if you can see. Super simple. Focus, you bastard. Nope, not going to focus. Anyway, there are threads in there now. So, tap the other one here real quick. The biggest thing, if you are going to be doing stupid stuff like tapping by hand like this, when you're starting the tap, take as much time as you need to make sure that it starts good and square. Now that goes whether you're tapping in the ideal setup with excess machinery to help you keep it square, or if you're just being an idiot in your basement and holding stuff in your hands, making threads in it, okay? Uh, if you, the more attention you pay, the easier this is gonna go on you, okay? It's uh, just like the old saying would go with woodworking or anything else, measure twice, cut once. Uh, well, the more time that you take making sure you're set up correctly and everything is operating correctly, the easier this is gonna go for you. So we're gonna finish tapping this, a little tappy tap, tappy tap, tap, tap. Anybody else watch AVE on YouTube? No, just me? Okay. Tappy tap, tap, tap. Anyway, so we're gonna back the tap back out of there. And you can do this, you don't have to have a tap handle, it's just kind of nice. These are just cheapies, I've got some fancy ones somewhere, but you don't really need it. It's just, where? Calm down. Um, hell, you can do it if you're really careful. You can do that with just a, you know, a, a, an adjustable wrench. So, not that you can tell other than the fact that these are shinier inside, but we now have some nice 832 threads in there. Um, occasionally you will see them kind of start to breach, or at least you'll be able to see the stress, uh, depending on how far down this uh, valve body was machined in the first place. But now, these are threaded for an 832 bolt. So when we go in and we figure out exactly where we want this to sit on the mounting plate, we can now just drill holes, pop holes, boom, run some 832 uh, bolts in them, and away we go. So the next thing we're going to talk about is modifying your air ram okay so this obviously is your ram here is the air port down towards the bottom and all these holes here are where the air ram bolted to the solenoid when this was still running in an electro pneumatic frame okay so what we're going to be doing is we're going to take this hole because this is where the air would be supplied coming in it would then be distributed into the solenoid which would only shift it over to the other flow path to cycle the ram whenever the solenoid was cycled. Well, we don't have a solenoid anymore. Now we're just using a one-way valve so we want to go directly to the supply port. So what we're going to do is that supply port is this one down here. Okay. So none of the rest of these are really a big deal. This one goes straight through. This one is a vent if I remember correctly. I don't remember correctly. And these other two here are mounting holes. These are threaded. Uh, this is where your solenoid mounted up to it. So what we're going to do is the, uh, the barb on this is 632 thread, if I remember correctly, uh, or it's close enough that it's not going to matter too much. Uh, somebody will correct me and tell me it's metric. I don't care. I tap for 632 and it works. So we're going to yank this out. We're going to plug this with a set screw, and then we're going to tap drill and tap this little bitty hole here for a 632 thread barb, this one. We're going to transfer this barb over here, and now we have our air ram modified for what we need it to do, okay? So again, not gonna make this super complex. I'm just gonna take, grab this in my little wrenchy poo, very carefully kind of just twist a little tiny bit break that loose and again this is one of those things where you never know if this thing has been loctited in or not so you don't want to just yank on it just kind of work it loose it'll come out 
it'll cooperate just like that. Ta da! So now we have empty barb hole and le barb. Okay, so again, uh, if you're a complete uh, stranger to drilling and tapping things or putting threads into other goodies uh, what you want to do is every every thread out there every screw out there has a nominal a nominal diameter that you would use a certain drill bit to achieve that nominal diameter where you will have essentially the center central shaft of that particular screw and then you know you would have the threads that you cut on the outside of that this is quick and dirty way of thinking about it. Um, so, a lot of these, if you're going for the absolute correct one, are in a numbered scale, or a, uh, a number and letter scale um, drill index. Well, a lot of, most of us don't have a massive number and letter scale drill index laying around. If I remember correctly, a 632 is a 35, number 35 drill bit, I don't know, it doesn't matter. What it comes down to is that drill bit, as far as the decimal equivalent or the outer diameter of the drill bit you're looking for, would be 0.11 or 110 thousandths of an inch. Okay, well this, because it's probably going to be a little more common, sitting right at about 108 thousandths, I want to say this is a 764 drill bit, let me double check. So yeah, a 764 drill bit, one that's going to be a lot more accessible to you, is right about 3,000 shy of where you need to be. Now if we were uh, drilling this in, say, uh, steel, stainless or anything like that, that might make this a little tougher on you, but we're going to be drilling into aluminum, so honestly, not a huge deal. Uh, 3 thousandths is going to be just fine. So. Normally, I would take this, I would go, you know, throw it into, say, my, uh, my drill press or something like that. And if you have a drill press at home, fantastic, go ahead. Uh, but I'm going to try to do, you know, be doing this as, as, as close to garage tech as possible. So, we're going to take this. We're going to take our drill. We're going to chuck that in there. And again... The hole that we're looking for here is going to be this one down here on the bottom, okay? This is the hole we need. That one right there, okay? So, I'm going to take these particular pliers, these flat jaw pliers from Nipex, Nipex, whatever the hell, are amazing. They're wonderful. So, all we're really going to do, since we're transferring the barb over, all we need is that thread portion there, okay? See? So just tiny bit. We don't need much. So what we're going to do is just hold that in our pliers and give it a little drill. We want to try to make sure we're as square as possible and just real nice and slow work that in there that way if it binds on you it's not gonna jump or anything now can you over drill this I mean not too badly uh, if it jumps all the way out the back yeah you probably over drilled it but what you're going to run into first is the essentially the air channel that comes down, okay? So, the next thing that you want to do, and actually we probably should have done this prior, is kind of block off the bottom port, like so, and then we're going to blow real hard into that port we just drilled. We probably should have done it prior. And out comes your piston, okay? So, if I remember correctly, this is a number eight ring, a 008 on the piston. Uh, most of the time, I mean very rarely are they chewed up, it doesn't see a lot of stress. So clean it off, clean out the bore while you're in here. Uh, the biggest reason that this is important is because we've just created 
essentially chips uh, down inside the bore of this. So uh, potentially down inside the bore of this, they may have evacuated just fine. But we want to make sure that we have a way to get all of that crap out. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're going to take our 632 tap. We're going to squeeze it into our little tappy do handle. Make sure this is our 632. Yes, it is. And then same deal. Okay. Uh, as always, you know, I'd recommend if you have a vise, yeah, throw this in a vise. It's going to be a hell of a lot easier to work with. Don't squeeze the crap out of it because it's aluminum. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to try to make this as homebrew as possible. So again, since we're tapping into aluminum, you don't have to be too scared of it. Just try to make sure you're going in as straight as humanly possible so that you don't bind on the threads. And again, see with brass, brass comes off in the little chips and kind of jumps out of the way. It really breaks the chip pretty easily. Um, aluminum tends to be kind of stringy. It's a very ductile, 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 ductile metal. Okay, so one thing that I do want to show you is more than likely we are far enough in here, okay? But just in case, what we're going to do, uh, we basically just run down until we've run into a little resistance, okay? Now, you don't want to force it. You don't want to force it because, again, it's aluminum. It's soft. It's going to be very easy to screw this up and rip some threads out of it, and that's not what we want to do. Trying to put threads in, not remove them. Okay. So, it looks like it's probably fine. Now, if you find yourself where the hole itself is not quite deep enough, or your threads don't go down quite far enough, yes, you can... Excuse me. Yes, you can probably force that barb down into this. But that barb is not very strong metal either, okay? Um, so you probably don't want to. It may snap off. So if you're running into the bottom of a hole and you want to add threads all the way down to the bottom, okay? Well, if we look at a standard tap like this, you can kind of see how the threads get real, real shallow towards the tip, okay? That's because this is actually cutting metal away and slowly graduating into threading portions okay so we're not cutting threads all the way at the tip of this instead what you want is what they call a plug tap okay now you can kind of make these out of standard taps but a plug tap is a tap that is used for making threads essentially all the way down to the bottom of a hole. Oh, my camera sucks, you guys know this by now. But this tap, essentially what I've done is shaved most of the cutting tip off and then kind of shaped the thread cutting portions rather steeply right at the end. So this will allow me to make threads most of the way down to the bottom of this hole. Now, is it necessary in this case? No, but it's something else to talk about, so whatever. So we're just gonna chase this real quick, just quick and dirty by hand, just a little at a time, making sure I've got those extra couple threads so that I can really fully seat the barb in this, okay? Oh yeah, that's that's more than enough. So, now that we've removed our piston, we have essentially a 632 thread hole on the bottom where our barb was. We have another one of said holes where our barb is going. We're going to blow the living crap out of this. It's not living crap, it's just crap. Um, so we're going to remove as much crap as we possibly can. Um, if you see anything down in there, 
fish around a little bit, knock everything loose, try to get it all out. Lovely. Okay. So. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a itty bitty 632 thread set screw. Okay, this is the same. Uh, this is a, about a 16th of an inch or an eighth inch long. 16th of an inch. Yeah, 16th of an inch long. And it should be roughly the same one. Oh, I lied. Eighth of an inch long. Uh, it's going to be the same one that you have in most standard timing rod collars. Uh, if you don't have it in a timing rod collar in a pinch, uh, you can always run down to the local hardware store and you should be able to snag one. So, shake up your blue Loctite. You can use red. Uh, it doesn't really matter. This stuff shouldn't be coming back out. And there's really no reason to ever pull it back out. Okay. Now a lot of people will frown on me using blue Loctite as a thread sealant. I don't particularly care. It works. As long as you have good tight threads, it works just fine. Uh, just let it cure. So, into the barb hole where said barb was. We're going to put the set screw. And all we're going to do is kind of grab that and get her in there. Really, you don't need to go anything but flush and a tiny bit more. There we are, plugged off and purdy. Get some of the crap off of it. Now we're going to do the same thing with the barb. Okay, so we're going to take this. We're going to remove as much old thread locker off of it as possible, and we're going to put some new lovely blue Loctite on it. Make sure you don't get any up in the barb itself. And then we're going to go and thread this into the port that we just made. This is the exciting part, just putting crap together. Now again, with these barbs, if you guys have done any kind of installs uh, of any barbs on rams or three ways or anything, you know how easy these are to snap. Okay, so once they start to get snug, that's it. Don't force it. Do not ever push it, okay? These are really, really easy to snap. Um, there's a reason I carry a little bitty tiny easy out in my, uh, my cocker med kit, I guess you could say. All of my go-to stuff. So there we are. A little bit of crap in the end of the barb. That will clean out. So that is your ram. Okay. So... Bottom port's plugged off. We're set into the new port that we drilled and tapped. Uh, we are going to let all this set overnight uh, for at least about 24 hours. You know, let everything cure. Uh, make sure to put your piston back in it, of course. Double check, make sure there's nothing in the bore. Clean it out with a Q-tip. Throw a little bit of grease or oil on le piston. Replace the O-ring if you want, if it looks chewed up. It's always a good idea. I can't say I've ever had one of these leak, um, but, you know, with my luck, you're going to put one together and it's going to leak and then you're going to, oh, didn't, didn't tell me to 
Put the damn bow ring on it. Well, do what you want. This is America, damn it. So, that is everything as far as modifications go. Uh, we will cover the frame in the next one. Uh, it's going to be relatively quick and dirty, hopefully. Of course, I say that, and this has been a 25-minute long video, so who the hell knows? Uh, so that's that's pretty much all for this one, guys. Uh, we will cover the frame, get show you how to rip it apart real quick, get the holes drilled, and where everything needs to go together. Thanks. We'll see you next time.